submarines are the epitome of stealth in modern warfare. Among the most advanced underwater vessels today are the Virginia-class submarines, VCS, nuclear-powered fast-attack submarines developed for the U.S. Navy. Virginia-class submarines are cutting-edge vessels measuring 460 feet in length, with a beam of 34 feet and a submerged displacement of approximately 7,800 tons. The shipbuilding process begins at the foundry, where various critical metal components are produced. The foundry plays a pivotal role in the construction of submarines by creating large-scale metal castings, including those for the Columbia-class submarine program. It is capable of handling massive pouring operations, such as completing a 21,000-pound pour for the submarine's components. The foundry works with a variety of advanced materials, including high-strength steels and specialized alloys that are essential for the durability and strength required in submarine construction. This facility spans over 200,000 square feet and produces approximately 1,000 castings per year, including major sub-assemblies like the submarine's sail. Once cast, these metal pieces are meticulously machined and prepared for integration into the submarine's larger systems. The sail structure, for example, is carefully positioned on the hull using large cranes to ensure precision. Powered by a nuclear reactor, they can operate underwater for extended periods, limited only by crew supplies rather than fuel. These submarines are built for various missions, including anti-submarine warfare, intelligence gathering, and strike missions using torpedoes or Tomahawk cruise missiles. They are equipped with state-of-the-art sonar, electronic warfare systems, and communications gear, making them a crucial component of the U.S. Navy's fleet. One of the key advantages of the Virginia-class submarines is their modular construction design. This modularity allows for faster and more cost-effective production, with sections of the submarine being built independently and later assembled into a complete vessel. This method also enables easier upgrades and repairs, as individual modules can be replaced or modernized without needing to overhaul the entire submarine. The submarine's hull is built by welding together prefabricated steel plates to form the pressure hull, which is designed to withstand the extreme pressures encountered at deep ocean depths. Each section of the hull is constructed independently, including the reactor compartment, propulsion system, and the various control and weapon systems. Once these sections are completed, they are welded together to form the basic structure of the submarine. The construction of a Virginia-class submarine is broken down into several major steps, beginning with the fabrication of key components. After the hull is completed, the submarine's internal systems are installed. These include the nuclear reactor, which powers the vessel, the propulsion system, and other essential systems like sonar, navigation, and communication equipment. The installation of these systems requires extreme precision, as each component must function flawlessly under the challenging conditions of deep-sea operations. One of the most important steps in submarine construction is ensuring that the vessel can withstand the immense pressures and forces encountered underwater. To achieve this, the submarine undergoes rigorous testing at specialized facilities. For example, the hyperbaric test chamber subjects the submarine's modules to pressures as high as 160 bars, simulating ocean depths of nearly 5,000 feet. Additionally, shock testing machinery generates forces up to 2,000 g, replicating the effects of depth charges and other underwater explosions to verify that the submarine can endure combat scenarios. Large sub-assemblies, such as the sail and stern, are carefully welded onto the main hull. The shipyard uses advanced robotic systems to aid in welding, which increases precision and reduces human error. These robotic systems also help with shaping steel plates into perfect cylindrical forms, which are critical for the submarine's hydrodynamic efficiency. Once the internal systems are installed, the submarine is moved to the dry dock for final assembly. Newport News Shipbuilding utilizes a high-capacity ship lift to transport the submarine sections and position them for final welding and assembly. In this phase, the submarine is moved onto a track and positioned in a dry dock canal, where the final systems are installed, including weapons, electronics, and life support systems. These submarines, introduced in 2004, represent a significant leap in naval technology, designed for flexibility in both deep water and littoral missions. Newport News Shipbuilding, one of the largest and most experienced military shipbuilders, is at the forefront of constructing these complex vessels. 
The construction of a Virginia-class submarine is a complex and highly precise process that involves cutting-edge technology and meticulous craftsmanship. From the initial fabrication of metal components at the foundry to the final assembly and testing at Newport News Shipbuilding, every step is carefully managed to ensure that these submarines meet the highest standards of performance and safety. With their modular design, advanced materials, and state-of-the-art systems, Virginia-class submarines represent the pinnacle of naval engineering and play a crucial role in the U.S. Navy's mission to maintain dominance in the world's oceans. Most of the submarines currently in service were designed and built decades ago, and only a few new models are being produced. However, in southern Sweden, Saab Ockhams has embarked on an ambitious project to design and build a completely new generation of air-independent propulsion. One of the most innovative aspects of Saab's process is the use of modular design and concurrent engineering. Modular design allows the company to work on pre-assembled platforms in parallel, ensuring that systems are ready before they are installed into the submarine's hull. This results in significant time savings, as multiple components can be developed and tested simultaneously. The company's test center subjects each component to extreme conditions, pushing the limits of durability and performance to ensure they can withstand the pressures of submarine operations. The facility also features robotic systems that have automated many of the heavy labor and repetitive tasks, such as grinding and welding steel parts. For example, robots now handle the task of grinding the 40 kilometers of hull and steel parts per submarine, significantly reducing production time and improving accuracy. One of the most fascinating technologies employed by Saab, Occam's is the Advanced Ultrasonic Measuring Technique. This ultrasonic testing ensures that the hull and other components can handle extreme shock loading, such as the impact of underwater explosions. Factory's shock testing equipment can generate forces of up to 2,000 g, simulating the kind of dynamic impacts submarines may face in combat. Additionally, the company's hyperbaric test chamber, one of the largest in the world, is capable of testing large hull modules at pressures equivalent to depths of 1,600 meters, ensuring that every part is robust enough to handle the harshest environments. Saab Occam's modern shipyard covers over 80,000 square meters of indoor space and is equipped with state-of-the-art tools and facilities to handle all stages of submarine construction, from design and assembly to final testing and maintenance. The shipyard has several dry docks and a high-capacity ship lift. The construction process at Saab Occam's relies heavily on advanced robotic systems and precision engineering to ensure that each submarine is built to exact specifications. One of the most powerful machines in the factory is the plate rolling machine, which bends thick steel plates into perfect cylindrical sections that will form the submarine's hull. Once the plates are shaped, they undergo additional preparation using a semi-automated milling and boring machine which ensures that all surfaces are perfectly aligned for precision welding. To further ensure the structural integrity of the submarine, a unique submerged arc welding robot is used to attach frames to the hull. This robot allows for simultaneous dual side welding of frames to subsections, a process that once took weeks but can now be completed in days. By automating these critical tasks, Saab Occam's has not only reduced production time but also minimized the risk of human error. Once the hull sections are prepared, they are welded together to form the main hull structure. The pressure hull of a typical submarine consists of about five main sections, each designed to withstand the immense pressures encountered at great depths. South Korea, known for its technological advancements and engineering prowess, has established itself as a key player in naval defense. The first stage in constructing a South Korean submarine begins with the raw materials, primarily high-strength steel. Submarine hulls are made from specially designed steel plates that are resilient to the immense pressures exerted at great ocean depths. At the plant, one of the most powerful machines used is the plate rolling machine. This massive, semi-automated machine takes the thick steel plates and bends them into the cylindrical shapes that will form the submarine's hull sections. The bending process must be executed with absolute precision to ensure the integrity of the hull. The plates are gradually rolled into shape, their thickness carefully controlled to handle the pressures submarines encounter at depths as far as 1,000 meters. The steel is also subjected to high temperatures to make it malleable during the bending process. 
This heating process, sometimes reaching temperatures as high as 1200 degrees Celsius, allows the metal to be manipulated without compromising its strength. After the plates are bent, they are cooled down in a controlled environment, ensuring that the metal retains its structural properties. Once the steel plates have been bent into the correct shape, the next stage is welding these sections together to form the hull of the submarine. Welding is one of the most critical stages of submarine construction because any flaws in the welds could compromise the vessel's structural integrity. At South Korea's submarine assembly plant, welding is performed using a combination of automated and manual techniques. Robotic welding systems are deployed to handle the bulk of the work, especially when welding large sections of the hull. With the submarine's hull taking shape, the next step is to install the myriad systems and components that will enable the vessel to operate effectively underwater. A submarine is much more than a steel tube, it is a highly complex machine packed with advanced technologies that ensure stealth, power, and survivability. South Korea's submarines are fitted with various systems, including propulsion units, command and control centers, communication arrays, weaponry, and life support systems. Given the limited space inside a submarine, the installation process is extremely meticulous. Every piece of equipment must be carefully positioned and secured to maximize the use of space and ensure the submarine's internal structure can handle the rigors of life underwater. One of the key features of South Korean submarines is their Air Independent Propulsion AIP, systems, which allow them to stay submerged for extended periods without surfacing. These systems are installed in the engine room, along with the submarine's diesel engines, batteries, and generators. Each component is rigorously tested before being fitted into the hull to ensure that it meets operational standards. The command center, often referred to as the brain of the submarine, is another critical area. Here, advanced sonar and navigation systems are installed, enabling the submarine to detect and avoid threats, navigate through treacherous underwater terrain, and communicate with allied forces. The final stage of submarine construction is the launch. Once the hull is fully assembled, and all the internal systems have been installed and tested, the submarine is moved from the assembly hall to the dry dock. The submarine is rolled out of the assembly hall using a series of lifts and tracks that allow it to move steadily toward the dry dock. Once there, it is secured onto a dry dock barge or placed into a canal, depending on the plant's infrastructure.